Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see uh, one more concept in R programming that is operations that can be performed on matrix. So in our previous sessions, we have seen the matrix creation and how can we access the elements of a matrix. So in terms of rows and columns, now we'll see the operations on matrix, right? The first operation is a manipulations. So adding rows and columns so for this we have to use a new matrix the syntax i'm writing here new matrix is equal to and in order to add rows we have to use a r bind function so first i'll write the function r bind r bind means adding rows right so r bind function will take a two arguments one is matrix name matrix name and the data matrix name and data right so data means in terms of uh, vector okay so this is for rows and similarly if you want to add columns if you want to add columns so the syntax again we have to use a c bind function c bind means columns adding the columns so here also the same syntax the first parameter will be matrix name and the second parameter will be the data which we want to add so these are the two syntaxes to add rows and columns into a matrix so we'll we'll see an example by executing with a small program so let me open the r studio and let me clear all the previous inputs and outputs and then we'll take one matrix so we know that creation of matrix m is equal to we have to use a matrix function so matrix of a data so we can give a data 10 20 30 40 50 and 60 okay and after that that next parameter is we have to go with the number of rows so i'll give it as a three rows and n call is equal to two rows two columns so total three into two six elements right now uh, let us print the matrix before applying the operation let us check whether it is working or not yes so the matrix have been printed with the three rows and two columns now we have to add a one more row for example let us take a row so we need to use the r bound function so i'll take another matrix n is equal to so r bind function and here we need to pass a matrix is the existing matrix and the vector so the data data means here vector so how many how many elements we have to do so in each row how many columns are there so in the first row we are having two columns in the second row we are having two columns and the third row we are having two columns and here we are inserting row that means we need to give two values because every row we are having two columns so i will give it as some 100 and 200 and simply print the new matrix so you will be finding the row added see 10 40 20 50 30 60 and 100 200 so what happens if you give three columns i mean three elements see you'll get a result as error so number of columns of result is not a multiple of vector length so here every row is having only two columns so we need to give a two, only two elements here okay now if you want to add new column okay if you want to add a new column then we have to use c bind function okay c bind function so c let us take uh, some p is equal to c bind function of let us take it as n comma we have to give the elements how many elements we have to give so for every column there are different rows right so in the first column we are having four rows in the second column we are having four rows so i mean after updating so without confusion uh, let us remove this one previous uh, thing so don't get confused okay yeah so in this we are having for every column we are having three rows okay three elements that means the three rows so here also we are adding one column so we have to give three rows so 300 400 and simply print n okay 
So here I ch am changing M and here I am using N. And you can see the third column has been created. So previously only two columns and now it was third column has been executed. So these two are the functions in order to add rows and columns. And the second operation deletion. So both comes under manipulations, right? So deletion or deleting rows and columns. Rows and columns. So here a syntax is small difference. So we need to give a matrix is equal to and give the matrix and give the indexes with a minus C of row number uh, row number similarly we can also give minus c of column number so the row and column will be get deleted the given row and given column will be get deleted for example let us take so we are having one uh, matrix with the 3 by 2 so total six elements now i'll give m is equal to m of minus c of 1 sorry 1 okay so what happens now let us observe print m so first row should be deleted so first one will be row and see the first row just a second so 20 30 40 50 60 so only first element has been deleted okay first element so if you are giving only one so obviously in the inside the subscript we are having see i, I, I have forgotten right so see single element okay single element we have to go with a matrix of minus c of index so index always starts with one right and this is for multiple entire row see entire row means just give colon and just observe see the first row has been deleted okay one minus c of one colon so minus let us take my matrix minus c of row number comma sorry comma close okay so for entire row the syntax is matrix and minus c row comma if you use a comma then automatically the complete row will be deleted similarly entire column same uh, syntax matrix of comma minus c of oh, sorry matrix minus c of column number okay so here let, let us take let us replace this comma front of the subscript so the first column will be deleted okay so only the elements are 40 50 60 so 10 20 30 has been deleted okay hope you understood yes so then multiple rows and columns then we have to give minus c1 comma minus c1 that means from the result i mean from the existing matrix the first row and first column will be deleted first row and first column let us take so 50 60 so first row first column so only 50 60 will be printed okay first row and first column right so hope you understood how can we delete the rows and columns and the third operation searching searching an element so for this we are using the operator called membership operator in membership operator right so here the syntax is element and we should not use a simple in we have to enclose that in inside the percentage symbol so percentage 
in percentage matrix name so obviously it is a boolean so if the element exists in matrix automatically it will return uh, true otherwise it will return false so let us check so i am writing here instead of uh, deleting see i am executing here yes so i am i am giving some 10 percentage in percentage m so what what we get it's a true and if you use a hundred and execute we'll get a false because hundred is not available in m so if you delete these percentage symbols you will get an error unexpected in right so we have to use the membership operator in between the percentage symbols so just remember and that is the syntax for searching an element and the next one is a dimension dimension of matrix so how to know the dimension of matrix for this uh, we are going to use a dimension function so dimension dim dim function and pass the parameter as a matrix name so instead of this one i will go with a print dim of m so here we'll get 3 2 that means the first one first uh, so it will display rows followed by columns so that means whatever the first number represents the number of rows and the second number represents number of columns so three rows and two columns three rows and two columns so if you change here two rows and three columns what happens so we'll get two three dimension is two three because two rows and three columns so the first number always represents the rows and the next one is a length of a matrix length of matrix so how can we find the length of the matrix that means how the maximum number of elements that can the matrix can hold so for that we are having a function called length and followed by we have to pass the matrix name so it will display total number of elements in matrix so here you can see instead of dimension i am using len gth length length of m so obviously the maximum number of elements we can store in that given matrix is six because we are using two rows and three columns two into three total six elements so we can pass only six elements we can store only six elements and the next one is finding number of rows and number of columns so simple for this one so in the creation we are giving n row and co n column so the same function we are going to use n row of matrix name will give it return this function will return number of rows and n call of matrix name and this will also number of columns okay so let us check n row of m and here i will go with the print of n call of m so let us execute here see number of rows is 2 number of columns is 3 and if you change here 3 and 2 so we'll get number of rows as 3 number of columns as 2 so this is one more operation how to find the number of rows and columns and the next with the help of these number of rows and number of columns we can loop the matrix elements so how can we loop all the elements of a matrix so for that simply we have we have to use a for loop for and the syntax we know that the variable one in sequence we can give a sequence r uh, n row of matrix and from this we can use a nested okay so normally if you are going with the uh, rows and columns so the outer loop represents the row and inner loop represents the columns 
so again for uh, where to in uh, one is to or uh, sorry c n call and m and we can give the index value here see simply we can give the index value so matrix of row and column so suddenly uh, you might be worrying about what are the rows and columns so this is nothing but rows and columns so this is a row and this is a column okay so row in and call in so row and column so simply we can get every element in a iteration so see well let us take so far uh, r in r stands for row r in so sequence one colon n row of uh, m that means the sequence will be having from one to number of rows three one two three right again inside the for loop i am going to you give column c in uh, one to uh, n call of m so how many columns are there only two columns so one and two c will be uh, moving with one and two values so here i am printing so print m of matrix of so r comma c so th this will always print the elements each and every element so you can see so all the six elements have been printed by using the looping variable so we can use the n row and n column in order to loop each and every element of a matrix okay so the next operation combining two different matrices so combining two matrices so this is for this also we have to use r bind and c bind functions okay instead of giving the data we can give the matrix okay so let it be m1 is one matrix and m2 is a second matrix and you can see the result is equal to r bind of m1 comma m2 so that means rows will be ins inserted then i mean the matrix m2 will be inserted in terms of rows for example let us take the here so i'll remove all things n is equal to let us take one more matrix c of so let us take 100 200 300 400 500 600 okay and uh, colon n row is equal to 2 or 3 n call is equal to 2 two matrices i am giving right so let us check whether they are correctly syntaxed or not yes we got our elements now what happens here result is equal to so r bind of m m comma n okay so print result so execute and you can see all the second matrix elements have been connected with the first matrix combined with the first matrix and if the same thing happens with the c bind so two more columns will be added instead of rows columns will be added okay so what happens here the question is what happens if both the matrix are of different sizes for example let us take here only four elements so number of rows will be two and number of columns will be two and c number of rows of matrix must match that means both the matrix which we want to combine should have the same dimension that means number of rows and number of columns should be equal then only we can combine both the matrix and we can form the resultant matrix right so these are all the different operations that can be performed on matrices okay so hope you understood this one and enjoyed the session so i'll stop here and uh, if you are having any doubts regarding any one of these uh, operations so feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much